Let's talk about many-to-many -many relationships in Spring Data JDBC. This is the third episode from the series, so if you haven't seen the previous one, you can check the link somewhere here. And what is a many-to-many -many relationship? When we have two entities, and one entity references many entities of another type, and entities from the second type reference many entities from the first type, then we call it a many-to-many -many relationship between these two entities. With relational databases, we model it that one entity is in one table, another entity is in another table, and then the relation between them is kept in the so-called conjunction table. So there is a table that has an ID of the first entity, an ID of the second entity. And this gives us an option to write whatever query we want. We can treat once this entity as a parent and then fetch the children or do it in the other way around. So JPA comes with a built-in support for many-to-many -many relationships. There is a many-to-many -many annotation that lets us just define one class and another class, and then these two classes reference each other. And there is one issue with this approach. There is a circular dependency between these two classes and there is no clear ownership. So in this relation, these entities are quite equal. There is no clear ownership which entity is more important in this relation than the other. Also, since there are no clear boundaries between these two objects, over the time when the project grows and it becomes more and more complex, this code can become very difficult to comprehend. So Spring Data JDBC comes with a different approach. Instead of referencing entities directly, you reference entities using IDs. And this follows principles of domain-driven design that says that if you have two aggregates, instead of referencing them directly, you should reference them by IDs. Okay, so let's have a look what does it actually mean and how to implement it with Spring Data JDBC. Here we have two entities. One is an author and another one is a book. Author can have multiple books and of course book can be written by multiple authors. So the first decision we have to make is where do we add a relationship? If it's going to be a book that knows the list of authors or the author that knows the list of books. In this case, I feel like it makes more sense to add a collection of authors to the book entity. So we add a, here a field that will be a set of, and yeah. So we can't just add a set of long that will let's say, uh, reference author IDs, but instead we have to create a new class that will model the, the reference itself. I will quickly create this class and this class will represent the conjunction table. So just to make the naming clear, we can put a table annotation and say that this is a relation between book and the author. This class has just a one field and this will be an author which means that this is an ID of an author that the book is referencing. Let's go back to the book class and add the missing import. And the next step is to add a SQL schema for this new conjunction table. So I will create a table that will be called book author, and it has two fields. One will be an author, and this is going to be an integer exactly in the same way as an ID in the outer table and a book, which is also an integer. And the primary key is an outer and a book altogether. Let's go back to the book class and make it a little bit more developer friendly. So first I will change this name to authors and initialize an empty hash set. And then I will add a new method that will be called add outer, where I could theoretically pass here this outer ref and then just do this outers add outer ref. But we don't want this outer ref to leak anywhere outside from the book class. So instead, it's much better to put here that we just add an outer and here initialize the new instance of outer ref directly inside the method. Let's now see an example how to use these classes. I have here an empty test class that has just access to both repositories and I will create a new author and one book. And now I can just use book add author and save it in the database.
it becomes a little bit more tricky when we want to fetch the data. So when I want to fetch all the books and then print all the author names for these books, I need to add some extra code. So here I will iterate over all the books and then I need to get all the author's IDs and I don't really want to have this author refs over here. So instead I will create a new method in the book class that will be return a set of long and this will be called get author IDs. And here I will map it to ID. So first I need to add a method here to get the ID. And then I need to fetch all these authors from author repository. What if we want to print all the books written by all the authors? We can fetch all the authors from author repository. But then author doesn't really have a reference to books. So instead we need to make uh, another method in book repository like find by author ID, where we pass an author get ID. And this method will return a set of books. And we need to add a custom query here. The query has to use a conjunction table. So we have to do select all from book and it will be nice to name it. So it will be select all from book, join book author on book ID equal B a dot book where b a dot author equals an id it's important to add here a param annotation and if we go back to the test and print all the books let's see what happens so as you can see there is a little bit of overhead here can it be done differently? Yes, the alternative is to duplicate a little bit of data. So for example, when we have this outer ref, and we know that when we fetch the book, we always want to show the outer name, for example, we can add here an ad additional field that will be just uh, a name. And when we create a new instance of this author ref, we of course have to pass it as well. Then we need to modify the conjunction table structure. And this pretty much gives us the ability that whenever we fetch the book, we already have the author names. So we can add a method to get author names. That will do pretty much the same as get author IDs but just get a name instead of ID. If we decide to go with this data application, then we have another challenge. How do we keep this data in sync? So as you can see, there is a little bit of overhead, but that's the price that we pay for having clean design and strict boundaries between these two entities. What is really awesome with referencing entities by ID is that we can decide that one entity lives in one data store and another in the completely different one. So for example, our authors can stay in a SQL database, but books can be saved in the Elasticsearch. And since we just reference them by IDs, everything still works. If you want to read a little bit more about uh, this topic, there is an article written by main author of Spring Data JDBC, Jens Schauder. It's on Spring IO blog and you will find the link in the description down below. One thing to note in Spring Data JDBC 1.1, which is currently in milestone one, this will be a little bit simplified. So we will not have to create this author ref 
class, but if we will just have simple conjunction tables like that, uh, we can use a very generic aggregate reference class. So this will save us a little bit from writing too much boilerplate. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button down below. And of course, if you want to keep in touch with what's up in spring and you like this format of video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.